Welcome to In The Zone with Chris Sander, where we talk lifestyle, entrepreneurship, self-care, and much more. So go grab a drink or a snack and come on back because it is now time to get in the zone. My guest today is a passionate nonprofit professional. Her extensive work here in Nashville has allotted many young girls and adolescent teenagers the opportunity to develop interpersonally. Here today to talk about Girls Incorporated, Girls Inc. is Senior Director of Youth Services of YWCA Nashville, Vanessa Johnson. How are you doing, Hi, Vanessa? It's good. It's so nice to be with you and yes, to see your face. I'm yes, excited yes. to be here. We've talked a lot and we've emailed back and forth. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you're here, I'm very excited about yes, that. Same. Yes, yes. So I want to start here because you went to school at Charleston Southern University where you retrieved a Bachelor of Arts in Religious Studies. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about this experience and how it led to you doing exactly what you're doing right now? Absolutely. It. I always tell people that my bachelor's degree was a long journey. I didn't get there in four years and I didn't, I went to multiple schools. So when I was fresh out of high school, um, a little background, my father was in the military, so I moved around a lot. So yeah. I had, he was transferred right when I graduated high school. So he moved to another state so I could go anywhere I wanted. I had all of these opportunities. So I ended up in Nashville And I went to Lipscomb University. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And so I went there for a little while and worked in a nonprofit called Youth Encouragement Services. It's still here in Nashville. And we partner with them. They're amazing. And that's where I learned my passion for working with kids in the community. But I did not finish my degree there. I had a lot of mental health struggles and I dropped out. And so then I went and got an associate's degree and kind of got back on my feet and got ready to take on the next challenge. And so by the time I got that degree, it had been eight years. And so I went for religious studies. I wanted to help encourage girls to be confident and to feel like they had a support group. And so I went for youth ministry and I worked in youth ministry for a few years. And then I realized that there was some change that I wanted to accomplish that I needed to step outside the church for. And so I realized that I felt limited in some of the change that I could make. And so I was I still love the churches I worked for and the people I met, but I wanted to kind of go back a few levels and just be able to engage the community as a whole. Yeah. And I moved to Nashville and I got, saw a job for a girls inc specialist <laughs> and at the YWCA <laughs> and that's almost 9 years ago now. Yeah. So I started entry level doing programming in the school and now I get to lead Girls Inc as well as a men together and so I oversee all the youth programming that yeah. happens for the YWCA. So you're a busy lady then. I am. <laughs> yes. Do you ever get like stressed out because you have such a positive attitude it seems like a positive outlook on life but Mm -hmm. do you ever get not stressed out because Mm -hmm. of the children itself Mm -hmm. but oftentimes having to do nonprofit work and trying to help you know a lot of our young Mm -hmm. our young children you know Mm -hmm. do you ever feel like you get overwhelmed you know you have to practice what you teach uh, for sure so we talk to our girls about taking care of themselves and managing their emotions and their self-care and their mental well-being and I talk to my team about that and I have to do it as well. And so a lot of times I can feel the weight of the state of the world sometimes. I am advocating and I'm fighting for our girls. I'm trying to make a difference. And my heart hurts sometimes because I'm like, oh, man. So I sit I let myself feel it. I typically take a bath and I play some music that lets me cry and I kind of feel it and I let it happen. And then I gather the people around me that inspire me and we get to work. And so that's how I try to channel it. And thankfully, I get to do work that makes me see some hope. And um, and that's what helps when those moments do come. Yeah, because you're changing people's lives. We're trying. We're loving them and trying to give them all the tools they need and help them thrive. And since I have nine years as an adult is a lot of time but when you think of kids so I (laughs) kids that I started working with have graduated college oh my goodness oh my goodness (laughs) and so I see girls that are I have one that's working in law and she and I keep in touch and I cheer her on I have students that have gone to school for engineering and people that have started their own businesses with nails and uh, so I'm just I've gotten to see 
some of the fruit of that work. I love that. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. So you currently hold the title of Executive Director of YWCA Nashville's Girls, Inc. Um, Can you talk about your position and the mission behind Girls, Inc.? Absolutely. So Girls, Inc. is an affiliate program. There's multiple Girls, Inc.s across the United States and Canada. So I am the Executive Director of the Nashville location, and we are housed under the YWCA And the YWCA's mission is to eliminate racism and empower women. And mic drop, that's what we're all trying to do. I think it's wonderful. And we are doing the work with the girls specifically at Girls Inc. So Girls Inc.'s mission is to inspire our girls to be strong, smart, and bold. We believe our girls are already strong, smart, and bold. It lives inside them. It is there. And we are here to help them discover it, help it flourish, help it shine, as well as eliminate any barriers that exist in our society that is prohibiting that growth or inhibiting that growth. And so we advocate for change as well so that our girls have a better future. And our dream is for a world where our girls are leaders and um, empowered in our society. So with the mission being strong, smart, and bold, What exactly does this mean and how is this exemplified for the girls in the program? Mm -hmm. Yes. So our Strong, Smart, and Bold um, motto is inspiring, but it is also the basis of our programming. So we have research and evidence-based curricula that is broken up into those categories. And so strong programming is there is some focus on healthy living, but also healthy choices, making good choices for your life, uh, making... Um, So strong would also be having good relationships. Strong would be being um, a good friend, learning communication, those kind of life skills that are going to carry them through and have a strong life. And then we have smart. So it's academic enrichment. We focus on STEM. So helping girls get experience in STEM and art. So you can put that together and make STEAM. Yeah, yes. Uh, (laughs) And so we do STEAM education as well and literacy and just making sure our girls are prepared for the next step of their lives, whether that's going to a post-secondary degree, whether that's getting certified in a trade, Um, We try to prepare them for the future and goal setting. And then bold is that life skill instruction, giving them the tools to be resilient, to be um, able to tackle challenges, to advocate for the world to be better for themselves and others. Um, So that's a snapshot of what it looks like. And here in Nashville, we don't have a brick and mortar building that we bring our kids to. We go out into the community. And with the knowledge that we have of Nashville, that works the best because Nashville is changing yes, constantly. It is. <laughs> and oh so my we are able to pack up our little kits and go wherever our girls are. Yeah. And so we try to have sustained exposure with our girls. We're in elementary, middle, and high so that we can be with girls when they're as little as seven all the way to 18. Our biggest partner is Metro Nashville Public Schools. So we go during the school day and we get to have the girls and pull them for about an hour a week and do our programming, build relationships, give them that mentor, as well as social emotional learning with one another and just helping them have a strong um, week at school. Because that right now is different than it looked like before COVID as much as I'm surprised to still have to mention that. But school is hard right now for our kiddos and um, the teachers as well, everybody. They're ha- they're they're still navigating, learning how to be together and um, catch up and feel like they're thriving. And so we're trying to help, especially right now in that. We also do free camps. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're getting ready yeah. for summer camp that's going to be in July. We also do spring break camp every year. And so we do um, – spring break camp is a week long. Summer camp is three weeks. And it's girls 7 to 13. And they come in there with us all day. And we provide all of – we this great stuff with them and have fun, build skills. We've had guitar lessons. We've done coding. We have, um, we're making advocacy buttons, doing lots of really exciting things. So that's a little bit. We do have a graduation for a lot of our girls. We do have girls, as I mentioned, graduate high school. So we try to send them off into the to their futures with support and resources. 
And we also do advocacy events throughout the year. As I mentioned, we acknowledge there are barriers in our society that we want to advocate to change. And so um, we want to give our girls the tools to be able to make the changes they see that are necessary and learn how to adequately express that as well as um, know the tools that they have at their disposal to see some positive movement. Yeah. I also like that Girls Inc., you guys focus on building financial literacy as well, which is really cool. Can (laughs) you talk about that and Mm -hmm. why that's important? Absolutely. I think um, for those of us that scroll TikTok or scroll (laughs) something new, uh, you see a lot of people my age that are like, the thing they didn't teach me in school that I needed to know. Yeah. And they talk about financial literacy. They talk about taxes. They talk about all these things. And um, we recognize that for our girls too. And there are some of our girls that have never had access to a checking account or a savings Mm. account or gone to a bank. We have students that don't know about credit and scams and good credit. And um, they're looking at college and looking at loans. We want to make sure that they have the tools and knowledge they need to make the decisions that are best for them. But we start even with our elementary girls. We start with um, wants versus needs. We yeah. let them know: is this a want? Is this a need? Let's I talk like about how you that. Guys start that young too. Yes, and I think that that's something that is really important to our work is prevention versus intervention. So we want to build up skills that protect our students. Um, to alleviate the need for intervention later. And so the younger you can start, the better. So we get to talk to our kids about financial literacy that young. And we do it when I did that lesson. I would have a one, I would have a postcard I'd hand up. And if they thought it, they would have to try to crab walk to me. And whoever won would have to say if it was a one or need and get, get a point. So we try to make it all interactive and fun. Yeah. And um, so they can remember, oh, I remember we did a crab walk. What was that about? Oh, yeah, wants versus needs. And uh, But we also walk them through a budget where they get – they have a make-believe job. They try to – find out where they're going to put their resources, their yeah. finite resources. <laughs> we talk about the expense of living in Nashville for oh, them. Oh, my goodness. Listen. And <laughs> this also financial literacy is important because when I talk about us being connected to the YWCA, we are the largest domestic violence shelter in Tennessee. Wow. So we have a live-in shelter for those seeking safety from domestic violence. Yeah. And um, I've had people close to me that were connected to domestic violence where financial aspects were very strong to continuing their fear of escape. You aren't sure if you can make it on your own. And that's why a place like our domestic violence shelter is needed. It gives them a way out even if their resources are tied. But we want to try to help our girls know how to handle their own finances, the importance of having their name tied to their money, um, and just some things like that. So there's a lot of prevention that can come from just financial literacy. So it's yeah. really, really important. I love that. And I love that you guys focus on that because, unfortunately, like you mentioned, some ladies that do go through domestic violence, oftentimes they may not be able to access their own funds because it's tied into some situation. So being able to teach them young about the importance of their own personal literacy and not allowing someone else to get in that space is very important. I also want to talk about this, um, the importance of finding their voices because um, dealing with domestic violence, dealing with just different things in life, Um, Why is it important for them to find their voice? Um, And especially, what does it look like for them when they're struggling to find their Mm -hmm. voice? So important. And I, you know, you've heard people talk before about like giving a voice to the voiceless. And I love how you phrased it because their voices are there. They've been silenced. Yes. And so making sure that our students, you know, our girls are predominantly um, students of color with intersectional um, identities. And so we want to make sure that we provide that extra support too with with that lens in mind. And so making sure that their voice is one, we advocate for their voice to be heard and have a space and allow that to happen. But then helping them know the importance of their voice, that the old saying for girls of be seen, not heard, um, that we don't have to hold to that anymore and that you can be free from that and you can use your voice. I relate Mm. to a lot of those messages um, as a, 
I, I was grown in a way that I was to be quiet and soft spoken. Yeah. And that was good manners. And that was what we were taught. And so sometimes it can be hard to help girls realize that they can use their voice when there's a system around them that wants them not to use it and to feel like it needs to be quieter or it has to come off a certain way or we're not going to value what you say. So we talk a lot about using their assertive voice and we kind of dissect aggressiveness, assertiveness, passive. So we talk about what different ways there are to use it, how it can come off and talking about their passions and their sparks and what lights them up and making sure they use their voice for those things. Um, So making sure that in a world that doesn't always value it, that they know when they're at Girls Inc., their voice is going to be valued, it's going to be encouraged, and we are going to fight for a world that their voice can be on the highest stage. We recently did an activity for our girls where they do a voting activity and they vote for Girls Inc. president. And so we just uh, recently announced the Madam President for Girls Inc. elementary schools. And that was really fun. So even sometimes letting them see women that are using their voice and that we can celebrate that and give um, them something to relate to and look to and see as a guide is also really important. So we have to use our voice. We have to show yeah. them women using their voices. That's really important. So I also want to talk about this self-esteem and confidence because you guys focus on that as well, too. So what exactly does that look like when dealing with self-esteem and confidence and teaching the young girls about that? Absolutely. So I have a little funny anecdote. I was recently in a club where we were talking about self-esteem and I asked the girls, I said, do you know what self-esteem is? And one girl confidently, she knows her Girls Inc. rules, you know, what Girls Inc. stands for. We have our Girls Inc. Bill of Rights. And she raised her hand proudly. And she's like, self-esteem is when you're mad and you have steam coming out your ears. (laughs) And (laughs) I was like, well, well, I love it. That was creative. (laughs) That was fun, visual. Uh, But let's talk about what it really means. And so we talked about self-esteem and we created affirmation jars for them to have reminders when they feel low, um, when they need that so they put some words of encouragement for themselves they put some treats because sometimes when we feel down about ourselves we need a treat listen uh, <laughs> to get you right back up feeling good yeah and so they try to put little <laughs> things in their jars that would help them and just be a reminder but um it, it's also interesting because our girls there's two sides they know that they feel down they feel they talk about yeah. bullying they'll feel they'll see that you know the cdc recently came out in 2023, where um, three in five teenage girls say they're hopeless. Three out of five. And so it's it's there. And we need to build up that encouragement of our girls and help them navigate the messages of social media, any bullying that happens oh, in their school. Yeah. It really, I love social media. I mentioned it for, you know, just a second ago. This will be out on a platform. Yeah. I love it, but we have to build those tools and help the students know. We can't just say, oh, turn it off. That's not going to work. I want to know, how do you guys teach the girls about their self-worth beyond social media as well? Because Mm -hmm. we see now people use social media and they equate it to their self-worth. And especially we see a lot of girls um, or even guys really Mm -hmm. who will kind of put themselves out there in the, in the not best yeah. spot, you know, mm-hmm. based upon how to they look mm-hmm. to get attention. Mm-hmm. How do you guys make sure you teach the girls a little bit differently? Yeah, we, one, people sometimes search for things they're tr- that they feel are missing in the easiest space. So if we can make Girls Inc. a space that they that's where they come to search for it. They have this place of support, of mutual respect and drive. So these are where we have those conversations. Um, Sometimes you think, I think of little me um, in my room at night sad. You don't have somewhere to go. Well, now there's access to a phone. That's where you might go. Um, But trying to build those tools ahead of time so they know when I'm feeling sad or down, what am I going to do? Almost like a safety plan. Yeah. So we came up with that this last uh, couple sessions ago with some of our girls. Like, what are you going to do next time you feel sad? And they're like, I'm going to walk to her house or I'm going to text <laughs> so-and-so and um, I'm going to look at my jar. Um, but giving them the people that do believe in them that are in their corner can help them feel stronger and feel at least we can't take away those feelings, but we can help you when they're happening. So I think community is huge, letting them know they're not alone. 
um, but also finding positive spaces outside of just those humans ones. Who can you follow on those platforms that is going to benefit you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I try to follow people that uh, anything that I'm insecure about, I find the people on those social media that is doing is talking about that in a positive light. So I have two babies that when I was postpartum, I followed all these postpartum moms yeah. that were going to give me encouragement. So for our girls, having helping direct them to places that are supportive, helping them look at music that is out right now that gives good messages, helping them learn to look at media with a critical lens and be able to hear something and say, I disagree with that. I'm not going to hold that truth for myself. Um, and then finding messages messages that is the truth that they want to hear and that they can keep it for themselves as an encouragement. Um, and then there's also a side where sometimes people might think our girls are really confident because that's a kind of a mask or face they're putting forth. Yes. <laughs> you see yes. them proudly doing a dance or proudly telling like, oh, well, I'm the best ever. You know, there are a lot of the girl, girls that I'm working with right now are very competitive. And so they're very confident about their skills. Um, but sometimes that is also hiding an insecurity that is beneath. So you also have to be patient and give time to pour into a student and know that what you're seeing at first glance is not all there is. And a lot of times our students work on behaviors that help them survive. And so that mask may be a survival. Like, well, if I act confident, if I act, then people can't yes. hurt me. And you're not, you don't, you don't want to discredit what's helping them survive. So if you know this is how can you work with it to help them really navigate what's going on um, while still being proud of what they've put hard work into to survive. So if a student's like the class clown, you, you don't want to just tell them, you know, you need to stop being like that. You're, this isn't helpful. Um, you find a way to utilize it for the positive journey that they're on. And so is it, well, you look how much of a leader you are, look how confident you are, you know, let's utilize that on this journey for your um, confidence and your self-esteem. So those are some thoughts. Um, so I'm curious to know what are some exercises um, and ways that you guys do or participate with um, in reference to families and parents and guardians, mm -hmm. um, getting them involved with, the young girls, as well as helping build esteem uh, through the young girls with their families, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. I think it's important to be able to build up young girls, but it's also important to see where it Absolutely. starts from at home. Mm -hmm. And then being able to get the guardians involved. So Absolutely. how do you guys do that? Yeah, we are really big in family engagement. It's been a journey over the past couple of years to try to enhance that, that we um, – that offering. And so we have events throughout the year where it's the kids and the families, and we try to have them do something fun together so that they're getting outside of their element. They're getting to engage. This year, we took the families kayaking. Okay. And so that yeah. was really fun. A lot yeah. of them had not done that before. Uh, so they got out on the water. They did something challenging together. And so that's also, they get to model certain things. Their kids may not see them being brave or trying something new. They get to go yeah. through that together. That creates that support between them. So we're also wanting, I recognize that our scope with our kids is limited. We show up as much as we can, but who is around them the most? Their families. And so if you're wanting to support a youth, you have to support the whole family. Um, so as the family succeeds, so does the child. And so we want to give them also resources that can be, be helpful for them. And so every event we do with our families, we provide resources as well. We just took our kids and their families to um, a skate center. We had 118 wow. people come. They were wow. bowling, roller skating. There was bumper cards, arcades. And pizza, of yeah. course. <laughs> I cannot forget the important pieces. <laughs> um, and we gave everyone a resource kit. And so some of those kits were um, resources for IEP support. Um, I, there, a place called Hair Hack, Care Hack gives families the opportunity um, to have support when it comes to IEPs or navigating some of those additional supports needed for exceptional ed in schools. Uh, we had these flashcards from um, a program called Crowns Up that helps students um, 
believe in themselves as well as learn literacy and a lot of different things. And so they got these affirmation cards. Uh, we also will have case management support. So yeah. we have people that like they can connect with, that they can talk with for free that can help them with if it's housing support or they need to get their high school equivalency exam. The YWCA actually does that. And yeah. so uh, we try to make sure they have resources and connections um, as well as get to know one another. Um, as someone who had kids recently, I've extra realized the value of your community and knowing that yes. you have someone you can call on. You're not alone. And hearing someone else's experience, you know, all of these people have teenage girls. Can you learn from one another? Can you all talk? Can you find that group? And so trying to give them supports as well. As we support the kids, we'll send home sometimes with our camp. We'll give the families questions. This is what your kid yeah. talked about today. Here's what you can talk about at the dinner table that connects them back and makes you a part of this. Um, we've had girls and their um, female guardians or mothers do painting sessions together. Um, so we'll, we try to keep them engaged and make sure that we are providing support to to the whole family. Yeah, I want to talk about domestic violence here because mm -hmm. domestic violence is something that's being talked about more now than ever, which is great. People are standing up against it. People are talking about their stories um, a lot more and people are taking it a lot more serious. So what are some signs mm -hmm. of people that are dealing with domestic violence, especially with you guys working with young girls? What are some of the signs you guys have noticed and what are some signs people should be aware of? Yeah, that's a really great question. And for our kiddos, we've had times where they, it can look very different, but you, you start to see a child who maybe either is, I've had it where they're oddly close to their parent, you know, like they're, they're texting them all day yeah. and they have to tell them everything. Um, and we've had times where they don't want to go home or they just, um, or they may show signs of anger and it's because that's what they see. Um, one time I played a song for my, it was years ago, but it was a um, third grade group of girls and I played, oh, it was a Taylor Swift song at the time. And it was one where the music video, her and her boyfriend, are, she's like throwing his stuff out the window and he like takes, they like are kind of fighting in a, in a sense. And so we were talking about love and what it looks like and what it doesn't look like. And we were talking about how love doesn't hurt. And her eyes just widened. And she just like a magnet comes up to me and says... And she was like, how can love not hurt if my mom hurts me? My mom loves me. And I was like, we need, let's talk about this more. And yeah. so there's also this sense that our kids don't know if if it's all they've seen. And so that was a really eye, um, eye-opening moment for me. And we talked through um, giving that girl support and getting her connected to a counselor and having to do the necessary steps involved. But um, I... She did sometimes come to school, you know, not um, – she was always taking – like, she asked for extra girls' ink shirts. So there was some potential signs that she was um, kind of needing some resources. Um, I think – we have a program at the YWCA called Sheer Haven. Yeah. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a wonderful free program for hairdressers and those that are in the cosmetology field. They can take this free online training to prepare themselves for dealing with a client who comes to sit in their chair and might be dealing with domestic violence because – that's that's always been my therapist. You know, I have I've got learned to get a real therapist, but you know, an additional therapist. Yeah, excuse yeah. me, yeah, but because yeah. they they were real. Yeah, um, yeah. I my hairdresser. I'd sit and talk to her for you know for a long time, and and she would be who I relied on and talked through life. And so recognizing that that's a space that people come. Um, and you see them up close and personal and you're talking to them for a long period of time. And so it walks through the kind of red flags and what to look for. Um, but I also think being isolated, if they're pretty, they're not allowed to um, come to other things, they're not allowed to have other relationships. I think that's a really big um, sign as well that there's some um, potential domestic violence going on. That's a really... Um, big way that people might start is they isolate you from your family, from your friends. Yeah. And so that you don't have, feel like you can go get help or 
um, no one's there to see what's really happening. And um, so I think that that's one that I also have seen as a trend that I pay attention to as well. So obviously you have been in this position for going on 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know, like, how has being in your position really grown you Mm -hmm. personally? You know, because you're working with these young girls and they're going through different things, sometimes Mm -hmm. positive and sometimes so negative. Mm -hmm. But how has it grown you as a person? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have grown so much (laughs) and I know there's still so much growth left to to take. But uh, when I first started, so I mentioned briefly the Girls Inc. Bill of Rights. We have six rights that we believe all girls have the right to. And one of them is that girls have the right to celebrate their successes. Mm. And I, as I shared with you, was raised to be a little more meek and mild and quiet. And I had a coworker and I love her dearly. And she would come in after club and be like, I just had the best club. Like everything (laughs) was so great. And I'd see everyone being like, oh, you did such a good job. You're amazing. And I was just like... That's just so braggy. And then I realized I have the right to brag. I have the right to be confident. And that's been a journey for me to be able to say my positive traits and to speak about myself in a positive way and be proud and um, not have to. There's wonderful humility, but you don't have to be humble all the time. Yeah, I get exactly what you mean. It's Mm -hmm. It's this idea of your humility must overrule your ability to be proud of what you do. And pride is beautiful. And I think that I didn't know that when I started. And so Mm. I got to see my girls being proud and I was celebrating them for doing it and for acknowledging their strengths. And I was like, why can't I do that to myself? I need to do that for myself. And that's still a journey. You don't unlearn things overnight, but I'm learning how to celebrate my achievements or celebrate who I am, just like I would want my girls to. We, sadly on our team, we say this to each other all the time. What would you say to one of our girls if she said that? You know, we like get on each other. Like if if you were one of our girls, what would you say? What would you do? And we're like, I know. (laughs) And um, (laughs) So we got to help each other that way because, um, and and that's part of what the Girls Think Magic is. We're doing that with our girls too. We're reminding them what is true and not letting these other voices and this other message change that and change who we are. And so I've been working really hard on knowing who I am and being proud of who I am, uh, which I want my girls to do. I've also um, think that um, being a part of racial justice and equity is something that is a journey I will continue to grow in and that I try to pay a lot of attention to. And so that's something I've grown in. Um, I think a lot of people in this space start off with good intentions and they have to learn that intentions aren't enough and how to actually make a positive Mm. difference. And so I've also, that's a journey I've been on is to make sure that it's not just about inclusion, but it's about equity. And so making sure experiences are equitable. Um, So that's another piece of my journey. Um, And finally, I will say that I, um, with the girls, I see their strengths more and more every day and how much stronger they were they are than I was, you know, and I love who I am. But when I was younger, I was bullied and shy. Mm. And I internalized that. And I wanted to be someone that would have benefited me when I was younger. And so I've been able to do that. But then I see these girls and they wow me. I just am mesmerized by their strength, by their talents, just Someone was drawing on a piece of paper the other day, and I was like, stop, you did not just draw that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you didn't look that up, you just drew that. Or, you know, girls that are, I have a, she's 12, and she already knows where she wants to go to college. Wow. She already knows what she wants to major in. And I had no clue. And so I just, this generation is really inspiring me. And um, so that's another key takeaway in my time. And I love that. With your position, you're able to still grow because, Mm -hmm. like, let's think about it like this. Like, in your position, most people, 
don't put themselves in the space to grow because mm-hmm. of the position they're in. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yes. But the fact that you're allowing these young mm-hmm. girls to still grow you mm-hmm. and see areas where you want to grow, mm-hmm. that's super cool. And Thank I love you. that. It, it shows humility, but also Thank shows. You. Thank you. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. it shows the humility part, mm-hmm. but it also shows just how resilient you are, Thank too. You. Thank you know what you. I mean? Mm-hmm. And I love that. So in conclusion, um, working people find out more about Girls Inc., working people donate, yes. how can people volunteer, like working people just yes. show up, you know? Please, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, be our champions, be our advocates. Um, so our Instagram is pretty active, so Girls Inc. Nashville. And um, our website is uh, under the YWCA, and so YWCA Nashville, and there's the Girls Inc. page there. There's plenty of ways to donate online. Um, and but there's also we have different projects throughout the years that we typically do an Amazon wish list for okay. or we'll yeah. do like a specific ask. So in May, we're going to have our girls in graduation. We try to send our girls after they graduate high school off with some tools and things that they need. So whether that's towels or planners, just to congratulate them on this big achievement, some gift cards. And so. That's something that will be coming out soon is asking for support to give our graduates that. Um, We'll also have summer camp in July. So it's July 1 all the way to the 19th. Love volunteers, love help. Uh, there'll be about sixty plus girls there. Yeah. So um, girls like to. Our girls will be ha- busy having fun. So we need extra hands to help us. Um, but definitely, our Instagram is the best way I think to stay um, in the loop and share our message wide. I think we're we want to be less of a secret in Nashville. And so um, any support and letting us be. Um, out in the community is really appreciated. Yeah. Well, Vanessa, I have to say this to you. I really appreciate what you're doing here in Nashville. I know nonprofit work is not easy, mm. but what you're doing, I can tell that you are doing it from the heart. I can just see it in your eyes yeah. and that exudes. And I hope people who are watching today, they're able to see that too. Um, so yeah. thank you for what you do thank here you. in Nashville. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being such a big supporter. Absolutely. We appreciate absolutely, you. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. For those watching today, thank you for tuning in. And until next time.